See, the truth is, and this isn't arrogant, this isn't pompous. Don't, don't hear what I'm not saying, watch. I'll never be rejected again in my life. I'm not living to be accepted by any one individual. I've been accepted by God, like I'm in, I'm not out. I'm accepted, I'm not rejected. Like I have, I don't not have. Do you follow what I'm saying? So there's nothing in this natural life and this, this direction that can steal that or rob that or take that if I understand the real me, the true me is found in Him and only found in Him. And here's so precious, like no matter what I've done in my life, that didn't change because He's love and it never fails. I don't know about you, but... Like, that's good news. So I have more than hope. So he sees me righteous through Christ Jesus, through the blood that speaks better things. So guilt, condemnation, shame have nothing to do with my life anymore. Why? Because if I see what I saw now, like what I see now, if I saw that then, I wouldn't have been doing what I did then. If I knew then what I know now, my life would have looked different then. So I can't go back and change the pages of my yesterday. But who I am can change when I see him. And all of a sudden, he doesn't see me for my pages yesterday. He sees me for what I'm becoming in him. That's why I have a new day. That's why I have a present. That's why I have a future. That's why scripture never mentions your past. There's two places you have a list. You have present and things to come, and the past isn't on the list. Why? Because he bought it out, and we're supposed to understand it's not ours. He paid for it, and he threw it in a sea called forgetfulness, and he took old things and passed them away, and he made all things new. We got to wear that and put that on humbly but confidently, because that's the love of God. Guilt condemnation and shame are the three major tools of the devil and people buy into them all the time and the number one reason we don't understand why we buy into them because our hearts actually care inside somebody that doesn't care you can't condemn them somebody that doesn't care they would never be ashamed they'd be flippant flippant and whatever and who cares people buy into condemnation because they actually care they're actually alive inside and the devil's trying to quench the life that's in them and get them to live in guilt, condemnation, and shame. And just look back and regret. Just look back and remember. Just look back and be defiled. Just look back and be identified. Just look back and be judged. But the Bible says, don't ever look back. It says, remember Lot's wife. Don't ever look back. Paul said, the one thing I do to apprehend, I forget what lies behind. Not the two things, not the one of three things, the one thing. The one thing I do to move forward and apprehend what he paid for is never look back. Isn't that amazing? Let me tell you what guilt is. Guilt is a subconscious confession without saying it that you're not forgiven. Condemnation is a subconscious confession without saying it that your life's worthy to be judged. Shame is a subconscious confession without saying it that I am what I'm ashamed of. That what I'm ashamed of is who I am. They're all three anti-finished works of Christ. They're all three lies from hell. Because while you're doing that, the blood of Jesus Christ is speaking better things. And drawing your heart into a place of repentance where you care about what you've done and you desire change. And when God sees that in your heart, he says, wow, you're not the man you're remembering. You're the man I created you to be. Welcome home. And it's called getting born again. It's called getting new life through Jesus Christ. It's called getting more than a hope and a future. He restores your present and he gives you things to come.
Does this make sense this morning? Listen, the intensity of what came out last night, the life we're supposed to live, I believe it's God spurring us on to really follow Jesus, not just sing to Him, not just pray to Him, and and, and get renewed, renewed in the spirit of our mind, right? Think about what the Bible says. You're in the world. You're not of the world. Don't be conformed to the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Beware lest any man cheat you through philosophy, empty deceit, basic principles of life. What he's saying is there's a theme there's a tone there's wisdom on the earth that has nothing to do with me and you've been trained by it your whole life and it's time to put it off and put on the new get renewed in the spirit of your mind I love that the spirit of your mind interesting isn't it the spirit of man the central core part of a man's being where he lives from the spirit of your mind that place where everything ticks where everything flows from that wellspring Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Ain't that something? Man, if we could get self-centeredness out of our mind, out of our heart, get self-motive, get guilt, condemnation, shame, looking back yesterday, yeah, but you know I, and get all that out of us, and all of a sudden see, I got a brand new day. Man, I'm living as if I never lived before. Man, I'm living one in Christ and Christ in me. I got the present. I got things to come. I ain't never looking back. An answer has come. Life has come. This is me in you. This is you in me. Wow. I'm home. See, that's what faith says. Never looks back. You teen challenge guys. I'm proud of you. Man, guard your heart with all diligence. Stay on the journey. Stay in the race and run it well. Amen. Listen, man. God has forgiven us of everything we've ever done when we care about that. Righteousness, right in the sight of God. He sees you and makes you right in the sight of God. He justifies you. It literally means just as if you've never sinned. I don't know if we understand this stuff. I think, I think we just say amen a lot of times because it sounds good. But if you think about it, God is looking at us today through the blood of Jesus Christ. Colossians 1, holy, blameless, and above reproach in His sight. Now, I don't know how many people are waking up that way, understanding he sees them completely clean as if they've never sinned, missed the mark, or walked wayward. So if he sees us that way, and all we're thinking about is the day we missed it, he's like, I don't even see that. I see who I created you to be, and I love you. And I see your heart's changed, and I see you want something different. Why are you living there when you're actually here? Nobody ever taught me in my whole Christian life when I grew up and went to church that God saw me as if I've never sinned. They always taught me He forgave my sins, but I'm always sinning. But He forgives them, but I'm always sinning. So they left me a hopefully forgiven sinner. And nobody told me I was a son. Nobody told me He loved me and lived in me and saw me clean. And that I was clean because of the word He spoke. I'm clean because of the blood He shed. Now I can come boldly and confidently before God, not arrogantly and presumptuously, but boldly and confidently. Why? Because I realize He loves me. And then I find Romans 6, and all of a sudden I realize that I'm to reckon myself dead to sin and alive unto God, that I'm actually to put on righteousness and present myself as a member of righteousness, that I used to be a slave to sin and unrighteousness, but now I'm a slave to righteousness, and the fruit and the product of righteousness is holiness. All of a sudden I realize grace is working in me because as a man thinketh, so he is. So if I see myself the way God sees me, it starts producing what he paid for. Now I'm living a holy life without biting my lip and being holy. Now I'm not into works. I'm not a self-righteous man. I can't get puffed up in pride. It breaks you down and humbles you and makes you cry because you realize you're living something you never thought was possible and you were never taught was possible. (laughs) Ain't that something? And righteousness itself, the scepter he rules his kingdom by. What we should all obtain like faith through, the righteousness of God in Christ. Has worked this thing in me to where I see I'm clean and I'm right in the sight of God. And all of a sudden it starts dictating my life, my actions. I'm getting transformed in that place of faith. And I'm living my life in a way that I never thought was possible. I got a good look at me now through him. I got the best look at you I could ever have. If he sees me this way, he sees you this way. If he sees me this way, he sees you this way. 
And all of a sudden, I get to see how he sees men. And now it's easy to love people. It's easy to lay down your life. It's easy not to give up on people. It's easy to care about people. It's easy to not judge a book by the cover and see that there's something more to a man. And if he's doing something outside of the box, he mustn't see who he is. He mustn't know who he is. That makes me care, not get judgmental. That makes me merciful, not angry. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. I don't know about you, but that is good news. And it's here to save our lives and set us free.